family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a high level game of Starcraft 2. Today in the top left spawning here on Equilibrium, the most her favorite map. But this is a Terran called Clem. Playing for Team Liquid of course, picked up at the same time as another brilliant player called Harston. Harston uh, left Liquid at some point and that's when Clem truly took off, being held back by Harston's presence. It is what happens. I've heard that before many times. The top right, however, you have another very, very top player. This is going to be dark over here. In the top right as our, um, as our red zerk. As our red zerk. Equilibrium. This is the map pick of choice for all zerk players that have a brain. And uh, that, that get to go for some type of loser's pick. Or if the Terran accidentally forgets to veto this map, it happens to be in. This is, I think... The most favored map in the map pool, or the second most favored map in the map pool in the ZVT matchup. Because I know that a lot of Terrans actually dislike Rold Husset Station a little bit more. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is one of those things where Terran players just look at the map and they're like, oh, it's very large. Mutas are quite good. I don't want to play it. And that they don't actually know whether it's good or not. They haven't played it enough to really make a decision, you know? It's like. If you if you go drink, you know, what's it called? Like a boba tea once. And then you have like poison infused, like mur mercury little balls in your boba tea. And you drink it, they're like, oh, boba tea sucks. But you can't make that call yet because you haven't had enough. Like you only had an infested one, you know, you had a bad one. That's awful. And then you go to boba tea a second time and you realize it does actually suck, even if there's no mercury in it. People that enjoy boba tea. Um, should probably get their brains checked. This is an early sign for lots of uh, just mental issues in general. Uh, brain loss, brain damage, probably have some type of concussion. Like permanent concussion. Just for the rest of your life it's there. You'll be living with those symptoms. And liking Boba tea is one of those symptoms. Climb here opening up with a triple CC. This is this is actually Clem's build. As in, I don't think he invented this. Uh, Clem is not much of an inventor. Clem is more of a copier, you know? He's the guy that copies your homework, but then fixes the mistakes that you made. So he has better handwriting. <laughs> That's what Clem does. Eight Hellions, a Viking, and a Liberator. And uh, ooh, four barracks going on at the same time. Okay, it's just going to be five wrecks anyway, so it doesn't matter. He's very good with this level of arrest. He's really, really good at this. I don't know what he does or how he does it. I just know he's really good at it. He's going to get uh, two, three worker kills as well as a queen. Now, it feels like that's not worth it. You know, you lose a lip and you hardly kill anything. But for some reason, it is worth it. I, I, I actually do not know why. It is just, it is what it is. Whenever Clam gets like any amount of damage with the lip, it's almost always just fine. If he gets nothing and loses it, it's bad, but... Majority of the time, that's not quite what happens. Spire on the way here. Ooh, a Mutalist game. This is something we don't see a whole lot. And the reason for that is simple. It's because it's so easy to die if you're going for Mutas, right? Like, Zerg just simply doesn't have that much wiggle room in the early stages of the mid game. You're dealing with the initial two medevacs, uh, the stimmed marines, the combat shields, the 1-1 the one -one upgrades, you know, everything's kicking off for Terran. And if you want to make a successful Mura play, if you want to go into a successful Mura game, you probably need to save a little bit of cash. And especially you need to save a little bit of gas. That's exactly what Dark is doing here. He already has 800 gas in the bank. But that gas could have been minerals or it could have just been more units. Because usually if you're playing just pure Ling Bane, you're mining much, much more uh, money. You're just getting more minerals generally. Uh, because you don't take six gases. And here we see a quick rush into six gases. Queens will be capable of defending this initial push. There's no armory quite yet, so these Hellions can turn into Hellbats. As uh, Clem continues kind of sharking around with these cars, trying to see if we can get anything done. For now, that's not quite going to be the case. Eight Mutalisk. Is this a hatchery in the main base? It's a little over halfway done. That's going to be the sixth hatch. That's a lot of hatches here on the map. The uh, Rich Vespine Geyser. Absolutely banging here. Not being taken yet. That is uh, quite surprising. 
Clan 151 supply against 134. First Mira is now out. Three more on the way. That's going to bring the total up to 11. Pneumatized Carapace. 18 out of 43. There we go. Here we go. Gets the snipe here on that mine. That is solid indeed. As these links get uh, connected to as well. Overseer showing up. Again, this is these Muras have not done anything yet, and Muras are not good fighting units. So so far, Dark has had no benefits of playing Mura, right? And we're eight minutes into the game already. Clem is setting up for a two-two timing. Like these Muras need to start doing something because you invested twenty-two hundred resources into it. Otherwise, you might have all just been playing Ling Bane. Here come the Muras now. Finally, start fighting a little bit. But they're just worse than, for example, Hydras would be in these engagements, and Hydras are quite a bit cheaper as well we do get a couple of snipes there on the mines that's nice and maybe now is the time where dark believes that he can send these across the map no not yet still doesn't have this rich vespine geyser which is just crazy to me this is the standard thing to do the moment you get this base up you take that rich vespine geyser like it's definitely worth it uh, you could even pull the workers out of these gases if you want more mineral income but this is this is just this is just poor play dark feels uh, too pressured to take it and I don't think that's the case I mean he has time to do other things he's spreading creep still he's you know he's just forgetting about the fact that there's a rich Vespine geyser here I think so now he's starting to attack this fourth base let's see how Clem's going to respond to that as these marines do get picked up there are a couple of mines here on the high ground as well Dark needs to pay attention seven kills no wait sorry 13 kills seven kills seven kills Four kills and five. I said five numbers and there's only four mines. You guys can figure out how that worked out. <laughs> Counting's never been my strong suit, all right? I think I might have double selected one there. I said seven twice, I believe, so it's probably the, there's only a single mine of that seven there. Still no Ridge Vespine Geyser. This is a confu confusing opening here for Dark. As he's not really utilizing the reason why this map is so good for Zerk. And that's the, the gold and the rich Vespine guys are on the same base. Which is just a crazy, crazy thing to have on a map. Thor here about to pop out. That's actually the second Thor already. That is also pretty wild. S22 has finished up. And this is usually the timing that Zerk players talk about as being very difficult to stop. Because this is where Terran has that 2 2 upgrade. They're maxed out. They're going to have a good mine count. And they'll have 1 to 2 Thors as well. Um, usually there are no Ultras out. There's not going to be 3-3 three, three or anything like that. And then on top of that, so Zerg needs to start investing in defending the incoming push. And then on top of that, Terran starts 3-3 three, three behind this. So they're going to create a bit of an upgrade lead for themselves. And this is just a, a highly unfortunate situation for the Zerg. Zerg completely incapable of dealing any damage here whatsoever. Look at that. Not a single SCV has gone down. While the Mutalisk usually is considered to be a harassment unit. Now, I, I wouldn't say it is just solely a harassment unit it can it's also good defensively against like medevac drops you're stopping kind of that angle that clem usually loves to take you know going for these medevac drops that's not going to be possible here. Is one command center is going to get taken out spanings are trying to run in but they're not really achieving a whole lot there's a bunch of banings randomly burrowed here which is pretty funny to me it's going to be turrets there though so that's not going to do all that much Squad of Muras flies in towards the main base as the turrets uh, are ready. No upgrades on these turrets quite yet. Once those are out, these Muras still have achieved absolutely nothing. Uh, this was... Dark is not necessarily in a bad spot, but these Muras did not contribute to his good spot. Like, he he would have been in a much better spot had he played anything else. I'm 90% sure of that. Because, it, yeah, it's just been expensive for him and... Like, I just don't see the benefit here. I mean, he dealt more damage with the Ling Bane attack than he did with those... Uh, how many Muras did he build in total? I think it was like 11, right? No, he built 14 Muras in total. Went for plus two air attack as well. I guess he can always use it later on when he transitions into the eventual Brute Lord. Um, if this uh, game continues being kind of this uh, split map-ish scenario. That's a big mine hit there. 23 kills on that single Widow Mine. As Dark is just... He's kind of using this to control the pace of the game. A very different type of Mutalisk. Interesting to see. Still, it's an investment that... Uh, in my mind, hasn't quite paid off. 
plus three about to finish up here for Clown. I wonder if we're going to see a little timing there with that. It is possible because uh, Carapace is kind of far away from finishing. What's that, like 60, 70 seconds? If Kaiden is plating, that's the 25% done. Adrenal glands, it's about to finish up. I don't know, this feels... Like it might have some actual potential, this push out. It's quite a bit of creep until Clem starts hitting any real objectives. And the bane count is fairly high as well. We shouldn't forget about that. 40 banes, that's quite a bit. Mine count surprisingly low. Here comes a good pre split. This fight is entirely of creep. And as Dark uh, cannot quite take it, Marines are on the top side, are a little bit vulnerable. Thor trying to move in forward. Ghost tanking quite a bit. Mines in the back need to start getting some connections as the Thor stays alive for now. My connection with a lot of bio there on the left side. As this is actually going to get pushed back, mines will get cleaned up. A lot of mines get cleaned up. I think we went up to 10 mines there, then went back down to 5. Still one mine active in the middle of the map. Okay fight here for Dark. Not gonna lie, this went much better than I thought it would. Same time though, Clem is just up on those resources lost. And I'm having such a difficult time seeing how Dark is, is kind of planning on heading into a split map late game here. Does he, like, is he gonna rely on just better fights with Broodlord and Faster? Or what's the play? What's the plan, my friend? What's the plan? You tell me, because I'm very curious right now. More bases on the way. And this this game, it, it kind of shows that Clem is much more complete as a player now than he was a year ago. He's just kind of entering this super late game uh, phase without any real issues. He's not trying to push push anything here. Usually he'd be super aggressive all over the map. Maybe that would have been better because he's kind of getting blasted here. All of those uh, orbital commands, of course, don't help in the fight as Dark pushes in. And seemingly just gets the W over here. That's a very sad way to end this game. As uh, the Ultras head in towards the main base. And usually once there's Zerg units in the Terran main base. It means the game is about to end. Either the Zerg is dead or the Terran is dead. Although I say that. Dark is losing a lot of stuff here right now. Needs to be careful that he doesn't push too far. He's going to take out one Orbital Command. Definitely traded better in that fight though than his opponent. He was down 6 or 7k resources lost. Now he's only down 5k, so good trades overall. Still needs to be careful. Would love for him to take on one of these bottom bases or one of them planetaries. It's not quite what's happening yet though. As these ultras start fighting the planetary, here we get a bit of a repair as well. Clem probably tries to run in right now. See if he can save it. I don't quite think he can. That means that these orbitals are also in trouble now. More and more SCVs going down. Ah, Clem. For a second it felt like it was getting close again, as he's still staying alive. Isn't playing uh like playing against an AI in like co-op, you know, just sending waves upon waves upon waves of units here. As the corruptor's now showing up, the medevac count is very high, and I I think that kind of messes with my brain a little bit because the supplies are very close, but there's freaking 20 supply in medevacs. And there's a bunch of supply in these Liberators that aren't really in the fight either. Like, the moment Dark decides to attack one of these bases, like, he just cleared the planetary over here. He could do that again. He could rinse and repeat just clearing planetaries again and again and again. And I think that probably should have been the play. Because there's so many medevacs, there's not actually that many units. There's a little bit of static, or not really static, but units that need to be sieged up. Mines, Liberators, they can only be in one position, and they were on top of the ramp. So a lot of the supply for Clam was not actually capable of defending planetaries outside usually it's bad to attack into a planetary i think this time it might have been better to, to do that than rather than what dark did now which is kind of running into a natural again and again trying to kill the army really down to just get the w right there at that moment and didn't get it mm. let's take a quick look at the actual situation then we have six orbital commands we have two planetaries And two bases that Clem still needs to mine from. So, so far he's mined from six bases. And this base isn't, it's not that bad that you lose the planetary here, by the way. Because this base isn't vulnerable. It's hidden behind this bad boy and hidden behind this bad boy. So even having their planetary in the first place might have been you know, a bit of an odd call, perhaps. 
We'd much rather would have it here. But this is your third base, so you're gonna have an orbital there. You know, that's just how the game works, guys. I can't help it. That's just the way it is. Liberators continue being pushed out. Shape Bombers level one has finished up. Vehicle plating right now on the way. More and more lips are being added in. Ghost count growing slowly, but surely. And that's the only thing that matters. As long as the ghost count grows, Baron usually is going to be uh, somewhat happy. Not a single sensor. Oh, wait, why did I say that? There's three sensor towers. I looked at the minimap and I didn't see it. I was like, oh, there's no sensor towers. Oh, a mistake. But there's three sensor towers. My bad. Yeah, so he has full vision here of the movement of his opponent. Mine's here. Going to get some connections as well. So you have these constant rotations coming out of Clem. See what's going to be doing here. Well, perhaps lose a couple of ghosts. Not a great plan. Not a huge fan of that. Not a huge fan of that. 32k against 27k here. Ghost being caught off guard. Just a little bit planetary in the back. He's not going to get blinding cloud. Instead, parasitic bombs here are being used. Snipes going off. Not taking out too many of these corruptors. But almost the entire ground force gets taken out. Planetary does die, though. And now I think we might be heading into a rinse and repeat scenario. The rinse and repeat scenario that I think the Dark probably should have... You know, should have activated that a little bit quicker. That protocol. Protocol rinse and repeat. Slam is a, a dirty Terran player. You guys need to be rinsed a lot, alright? There's a good soap as well. Huh? I wonder if there's a big difference between like uh, the A brand soaps and the mediocre soaps. I guess the, the A brand soaps have better perfume. Like soap is soap most of the time. Yeah, so we have an attack here into this position. This is not quite gonna work. I don't think so. As uh, Clem can just continue kiting back to a bunch of random mines in positions as well. And this actually went very well for Dark. This went phenomenal for Dark. Gonna lose all of his Ultras, but does get a lot of connections here. Well, it's had some work. That's not the biggest deal. Ultra here is gonna fall as well. This base is vulnerable. This entire area is vulnerable, by the way. This is just not not just the base. Like this, this is weakness here near the main base. Like this is a serious issue for Clem if Dark ever gets the right diagnosis there. You know, he looks at it like oh, that looks weak. So he sends in a couple of links, and it needs to be more. There needs to be an overseer there so you can clear things, like an like one or two ultras, 40, 50 links, and an overseer. If you move it all towards that top side, this base stops mining all of a sudden, and also this area just becomes so open for potential run buys you're gonna see more mines in this general area maybe a rewall in the natural yeah this is this is actually a very good call or at least i think this is the correct call there's no overseer which is an issue because you really want to clear these mines obviously um, because now these mines are all gonna get real nice connections look at that 10 kills 9 kills 8 kills eventually clem is gonna clean this up and these mines will still be alive that is real silly there out of dark it is a sloppy play Still no... Okay, now there's an Overseer here. I'm not sure if there's enough links to clean this all up. It seems to me that a bunch of mines still managed to survive. Some random links still here in the natural as well. I love that Dark managed to kind of identify the same weakness. And now instantly the move towards the bottom side. There's no more mines available. I think he could have continued. He's getting afraid. Doesn't have an Overseer with this. Once again, real sloppy here out of Dark. Who's lacking gas, by the way. Could still be taking extra extractors. Look at that. That's four five extractors that haven't been taken yeah starts taking them now realizes he doesn't have the gas i think clem got away with murder there i think he should have died like right at that moment I, because if you lose this bottom base at this point he's dead this base has no mineral patches anymore this base is well also has no mineral patches and this base is impossible to take so that means that this is the only base where mules can drop and that's what's happening right now this planetary wasn't here anymore I don't see a way for Clem to ever get to decent supply again. Like, legit in a million years. It's not. It's just not going to be possible. Not in my mind, at least. Ooh, hatch here being taken on the top side. That's kind of... optimistic. And also, it's going to be impossible to hold the moment that Clem realizes it's there. Maybe he can mine a little bit of gas. You now get the double extractor, see if we can get something down there. Supply for Clem at 173. That's uh, once again, loads and loads of SCVs here are falling. A bunch of links have burrowed. As we're gonna get the scan, I wonder if Dark is gonna unburrow. No, he's busy focusing on uh, 
on bigger and better things. Going to take out the planetary that doesn't matter as much anymore. And we'll for now ignore this base. Which I think, once again, is a, <laughs> a little bit of a mistake. It's a priority issue there. The base with the many mineral patches that is consistently being mulled should be slightly more important. Still have seven orbitals, don't forget that. Overall resources lost is within 5k of one another. How close is Dark to mining out? That's the question now. We have five, six mineral patches here. You have eight mineral patches, soon to be five. Actually, there's only seven mineral patches left. Soon to be four then, I guess. This still has eight healthy ones. So. Yeah, Dark still has quite a bit of mining, but his gas is what's really low. And every single time he goes in, he loses an ultra now. And it's almost just going to be forced into a pure Ling army. Makes you wonder. Maybe a couple of Hellbats would be worthwhile now with the uh, Infernal Pre-Igniters. As Clem, I mean, eventually he's going to mine everything out, right? If, if the game continues at this pace. There's never going to be a Broodlord transition here, by the way. The gas is simply not available to create the, the army that is necessary to support the Broodlords. In order to build Broodlords, you're going to need Vipers, you're going to need Investors. Uh, I think you're going to need about like six, seven... 7k gas something along those lines um you can probably still get it on the map but by the time you've mined all of that yeah, i mean you can't survive like you can't just wait and mine 7k gas it's gonna take an extremely long time it's gonna take like 10 12 minutes or so for you to get all that gas and then you only have a single army clan will continue trading during all of that so it's unrealistic right now for dark to transition out of what he has and that means that he needs to start making some plays Specifically towards this base. This is the most important base right now. Clem isn't aware of it yet. Clem's like, wait, why are you attacking my third? That makes no sense. Why are you here? Dark's like, ah, oh, no particular reason. I just like this area. <laughs> Don't care about the planetary march. Of course, Dark, it, by attacking this area, is keeping this base safe. If this base gets lifted, if this area, you know, gets taken out, it becomes much easier to hold this base. Much, much easier. And... If Dark gets to mine one of Clem's bases, that would be huge. I don't think he's going to be capable of doing it, though, because Clem right now is aware of this base, is going to move in forward. Dark wants to move in as well. No, pivots towards the top side. No, goes back towards the bottom. Needs to be careful. There are two mines here. Two mines. That's going to be it. That's it. That's it for the mines. This is the last mining, the real mine, last real mining base for Clem. So if it goes down... That is indeed going to be an issue here. Combaining, though, moving in forward. Not a single investor has been built, by the way, in this game. Not a single borrowed investor. Well, usually this is the bread and butter of the top Zerg players. The Rainers, the Serals, and, of course, the Darks. Um, it, for whatever reason, it is not happening. No investors. And here we go. Pure Link trying to run in here. Trying to get some kills. Corruptors are fighting these Liberators, which are on the siege. Vikings showing up as well. More Liberators coming back home as these banes are being shot. Oh no, they're being pushed back. There's not that much cash remaining right now for Dark, but there's almost no cash remaining for Clem. Look at that. He has no money in the bank. 58, and he's not mining anything. Lynx once again coming in. Dark, does he have the larva? He's only five larva remaining. He has a lot of money in the bank. Needs to start injecting somehow, some way. And if he can spend his money, he's actually just winning the game. But he can spend his money. I can't believe he's, he might lose because of a larva issue. This is extremely rare in the late game, especially if you have nine hatcheries. He's going to push this back. Needs to continue building links. These mules are huge. If these mules can mine, Clem has a chance because he has plenty of gas. All he needs is marines because he's only going to be fighting against links. He's only going to be fighting against links. Eh, I mean, there's going to be some bane links in there, but it's a lot of links. It has a lot of links here. That's really a lot of links. They're all being sent across the map as well right now, taking out that top side base. Clem decided to land it. That's a command center. Probably wants to turn it into a planetary. I think Clem shouldn't even care about that too much. He should just try to mine this bottom side for now. Just say, hey, I'm, I'm giving up that top side. Oh my god, there's no wall here. There's no wall here whatsoever. As Yeah, I think Dark just has it anyway. I think Dark just has it anyway. He's gonna get in towards the main base. He has... Uh, whoop, whoop, do hold that thought as he loses a bunch of Hydras here to the uh, Bio Ghost Force. Snipes going off. That is a pretty big deal. A couple of links did manage to borrow 151 supply to 117. Army supply actually supply surprisingly close. 
see a lot of these uh, links go down as well. Turret's gonna get sniped. We see another burrow. Yep, of course, and it's going to uh, force Clem to scan once more. Clem is aware of what is going on, though. He's gonna lose the ghost scanning. He's getting absolutely outplayed here by Dark. Look at that. Dark playing a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal game here on Equilibrium. And uh, at the same time, though, Dark is broke. Dark is broke. This base, it's all gonna be about this base. It's all gonna be about this base. Clem pushing in. Seems weird. Seems like a mistake. Whoop. Whoop. Mines though, connecting in a big, big way. There we go. Overseer's gonna get taken out as well. A couple of Hydra's gonna get sniped. Move back towards the mine. 135 supply to 180. And all of a sudden, it feels like Dark is just dead. He has no cash left. He's gonna snipe this base though. Okay, so now Clem once again has no income. But this time, Dark has no bank. Last time this happened, Dark had a huge bank. He couldn't spend it instantly. And now there's no bank, and thus he also can't spend anything. Oh no. Ghost Academy being rebuilt behind all of this mines burrowing in here as well. And I think this is actually going to be it. Holy crap. On oh, an absolutely crazy game. I am very surprised by this. I thought for sure... Uh, at many points that Clem had had lost it. Which is weird because the early game felt so clean to him. Like this is a real difficult map for Terran usually. Um, although I think the defensive layout is okay once you get to like five, six bases. Once you get a planetary over here, like this bottom side in the middle is pretty much locked off, right? Then we had a couple of fights. I'm not quite sure what it was. At some point he's attacking his natural, right? With like freaking Ultra Corruptor. It really felt like the game should have ended there, but it didn't. And these planetary stayed alive for so long, and then this bottom base gets taken. And every time you thought that Clem broke, he didn't. He just, you know, you hear the bones, you know, they they cracked a little. He's like, oh, that's a, that's a bridge broken. And I was like, nah, I can still walk. I'm fine. Wow, what a freaking show! Sick, real nice, uh, real nice game. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and bye bye.